Hello there, I'm Maya, and welcome to I Want to Pursue the Mean Side Character. <laughs> oh no! I lost my handkerchief! That's terrible! Wasn't that your favorite silk one? Yes. It was so expensive, I might have to wait a while to get a new one. Excuse me. Miss Claremont? Does this hand handkerchief belong to you? No! Huh? But I heard you explicitly say... You can keep it, please, have it. I don't want it anymore. Look, this handkerchief is yours, so just take it. Oh no, we upset her. Please don't bully us, we're sorry, we'll never bother you again. Let's go. I watched the fl two fleeing figures. I can't believe we ran into Miss Claremont. She's a mean looking, she's as mean looking as they say. At least we didn't do anything like talk to His Highness. His Highness? I heard she saw one girl who had accidentally touched His Highness' shoulder and she had to quit school after her family was forced to move out to the country. How cruel! Of course. What else should I expect? I mean, I didn't really expect a thank you or anything, but I also didn't enjoy how they tr reacted when I tried to hand her her item. But what else could I do? Ever since I could remember, people seemed to think whenever I approached them that I planned to harm them or something. I wasn't sure if I, it was because I was taller than the average woman, or because my eyes looked mean and sharp, or because my hairstyle, which I have tried to straighten, was reminiscent of an antagonist from a novel. Even my own name, Beatrix, seemed to add to the image of me being a spiteful person. I don't know what my parents were thinking when they named me that. Not like I could ask them, though, as I wasn't particularly close with them either, which made me a very lonely child. Thus, I did my best to try and make friends with other children. Yet, any time I tried to approach one of them the child, they would end up crying or wetting their pants from seeing my sharp eyes. Thus, I was never able to make friends since I was a child, even though I truly tried resulting in my somewhat awkward personality. Tired all of it. I had thought that if I was going to be treated as a mean-spirited bully, no matter what I did, might as well just play the part. I quickly became known as Beatrix, the jealous fiancé of the prince, who would tyrannize anyone who approached him. Though if I were truthful, I don't care much for my fiancé. And Edward, my fiancé, never bothered to take any interest in me either. But I still put up the act I was possessive of him merely for, the, for appearance's sake. Additionally, I did nothing like force a girl and her family to move like those girl, two girls said. That girl moved because her father's new business was located in the rural area of our empire. What I mostly did to people was intimidate them a little, or just stare at them with these sharp eyes of mine. However, that was enough for the student body as they had begun to spread rumors of my cruelty. Thus, I never had to do much to make people afraid of me. And so for a good amount of my schooling, I was THE infamous Beatrix Clermont. Until... Beatrix! Right on cue. This is Lily Adbot, my friend is as sad as it is to say. Lily is basically the opposite of me. She's well known among the student body for being the low-class transfer student who seemed to ensnare the hearts of several well-known male students, including a Grant Knight's son, the Prime Minister's son, and even an illegitimate son of a duke, but he's kind of known to be flirtatious. Yet she never seemed interested in any of them, and despite them always approaching her, she spent her time instead... Beatrix! There you are! I was looking for you so we could have lunch together! With me. The heinous Beatrix Claremont. <laughs> he didn't have to seek me out. I'm sure I would have gone back to the cafeteria at some point. And there I go again. Unable to speak my feelings instead of saying sorry or even thank you. I just speak harsh words only. 
one of the results from my lack of social communication. True, but I wanted to see you as soon as possible. There she goes saying such embarrassing words again. While well, I am unable to speak about my feelings, Lily seemed to have no filter. Besides, the lunch is just some weird European food again, so it's not like I'm that excited to eat it. I mean, it doesn't... This world have some normal food? Would love to see a burger again. What was that? Oh, nothing. By the way, what's with the handkerchief? Oh, this belonged to some student. I was trying to return it, but... Seeing her face, she probably guessed what happened. Want me to go cast a curse on them? Lily! Don't even talk about that! You know the usage of dark magic is forbidden by the royal family. If you're caught, you could face execution or worse. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. I wasn't that serious anyway. Why does magic even exist here if we can't use it if we want to? Anyway, why not keep that handkerchief then? She didn't take it when she had the chance, so find your keepers now. I'd rather not. She said this was important to her, and she might regret not taking it, so... You're so sweet, Beatrix. What? How about we go take it to the last and found before we grab our lunch? The girl might grab it from there later. I, I suppose, yes. That would be the right course of action. Let's go then. Well, wait, don't rush for me. And so we brought the both returned the handkerchief to the lost and found. Despite how I may act, I am truly grateful for having Lily as a friend, as she seemed to make up for some of the deficiencies I have. She would get upset at me if I said that aloud, though. Lily would constantly tell me not to bring myself down, while also showering me in praise and compliments we saw earlier. I do not know what, how she always finds a kind thing to say about me, as I never saw any of these traits in myself before. Yet still, rather than seeing me as a detestable, as the other students do, she's the only one that doesn't see me that way. Rather, she seems to see me as lovable. I'm not sure how someone such as me was lucky enough to have a friend like her, but ever since we did become friends, she was struck to my side and seemed to be the only person who could tolerate me. I'm harsh, mean-looking, and antisocial. And she's so small and cute and sweet and overall sincere. Anyone would wonder how two drastically different people such as us became friends, correct? Well, it started out around the beginning of the school year, when I was still putting on my little persona. You there, commoner! Hmm? Me? Who else would I be talking to? Does anyone else here reek of the scent of the labor? The other students laugh at this. Lily at the time was a new student to the academy. Furthermore, she's the only student to come from a lower class. She was accepted due to the fact that she had been abdu adopted by a baron recently and now attends the academy, which is filled with other wealthy and upper-class students. Despite me being the only one com confronting her, I was not the only student who found her presence irksome. So seeing me belittle the tiny girl was a treat for most of the student body. Yet who knew what that little confrontation led to? Wait, that hair, those eyes, that pose. Are you Beatrix Clermont? Um, yes, I am. Oh my god, it's really you! You? Know of me? Of course I do, I played every route in Magical Academy Love Life in order to just even catch a glimpse of you. I even have all your official merchandise. Well, I did, I mean. Bill, that stupid truck hit me. Magical Academy? Merchandise? Truck? Oh, wow, you're even more beautiful in person. But beautiful? Yeah. Even more than your sprite. Oh, but I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lilia Bot. It's nice to meet you. Oh. Um, nice to meet you too. 
Wait, that's not why I approached you. Hmm? Why did you approach me then? Hmm. I saw you at and the prince walking together to class. Tell me, as I am the fiancé of the prince, that your relationship... What your relationship is with him? We don't have any relationship. He bumped into me, which made me drop my books. Then he made some big deal out of it and told me he would carry them for me to the next class, which I refused. Yet still... Even though I kept telling him no thanks, he carried them anyway, making a bigger thing out of it than it was. Honestly, it was kind of troublesome. That event scene always irked me, but more so in real life. What? As if someone as great as the prince would carry some commoner's filthy books to class. I'm not lying. And honestly, I wasn't happy about the whole thing either. Though I can't do anything about it now, so there is anything else I can do for you? Fine, since you asked. I don't want you to ever come near the prince ever again. Done. Huh? Hanzo. Deal. I agree. I'm never gonna approach the prince. Won't even look at him. Hey, I'll be happy if he does the same for me. I... You agreed pretty quickly? Of course I agreed. If it means you'll stop being upset with me, I'll gladly avoid the prince. I see. Of course. It's good that you understand your situation then. I'm happy to hear that you agreed so easily. And I'm happy that you're happy. Hmm? I think you look so much more lovely when you are happy, Miss Beatrix. I... You think I'm lovely? Your golden flaxen hair, your sky blue eyes, the elegant way you hold yourself. How can I not think you are lovely? Rather than being approached by the prince, I am much happier being approached by you. Elegant? How about this? In exchange for never seeing the prince again, I get to see you more often. <laughs> so if I could, may I please get to know you better by starting off as friends? I'd be eternally grateful if someone as beautiful as you... Okay, fine, just please shut up. Oh, she's so cute. So that's a yes? It's a yes. I'm so happy to hear that. My first friend. Hmm? Say something? N nothing. I said nothing. Your ill-bred ears are probably just too full of dirt to hear anything. Either way, I look forward to getting to know you better. L likewise. No, oh, I'm only doing this so you don't have any time to spend with the prince. That's fine by me. How about we talk up uh, walk to our next class together? If you would like. Of course! Any chance to spend time with you would make me happy. And thus, that is how we became friends. I still cringe at the way I acted before. Honestly, it was pretty awful. And I would love to say my behavior changed drastically after we became friends, but that would be a lie. Though, thanks to Lily's patience and effort, to, and effort on my part, we have gone to a point in our friendship where I no longer call her commoner. I also stopped hurling insults at her. Yet... Lily never stopped speaking of her admiration of many, many features, which, I suppose, motivated me to try and change it a bit so I could meet her expectations. And so I stopped my horrible ways and tried to be the person she saw me as by trying to help others and working harder to make more friends. Though there hasn't been much success, but at least Lily has always been there to comfort me when things never went my way. And so here we are now. The school lunch is delicious, isn't it, Beatrix? Hmm, yes. It is quite good, I suppose. Even the bread is soft and fluffy. Yes, I do agree. We should feed each other. I think so as well. Wait, why would I ever do such a thing? Especially in public. Boo. <laughs> really? Just then, I see that Lily dig into her bag and take out the textbook. 
Isn't that textbook for our arcane class? Are you going to study? Ah, uh, yeah. In the, they didn't really teach magic where I was from. Though that's because magic didn't exist. So I need to study to catch up with the rest of you guys. But studying magic in this world is way different than a video game. All I had to do was mash some buttons, but there, but here, actually, have to do reading and stuff. Did you get? Ah, uh, never mind. Don't worry about it. Let me see. Oh, okay. As Lily hands me her textbook, I glance over the material she is studying. This material we've gone over this weeks ago. She's still on this. This way, she might not catch up for the up upcoming test. Let me help you study. Are you sure? I don't want you to waste your lunch time helping me. It was my decision to help you, wasn't it? Are you questioning it? Uh, no. Good. Then let's start rewriting together. Besides, we are friends. We should help each other out. Oh, <laughs> cute. I think five years were added to my life. What did you say? Hmm? Nothing whatsoever. Right. Well, let's go over some of these spells right here. You'll need for next week's test. Whoa! I can't believe I was able, able to catch up that fast. You're so smart, Beatrix. I'm, I'm not that smart. I merely studied, that's all. The benefits of having only one friend. Most of my free time was spent studying. But I am glad I was one of of some assistance to you. We were more than just some assistance. I really appreciated Beatrix. I'm so grateful to have you as a friend. You grateful? Should it be the other way around? I mean, she has to tolerate me. Yeah. I mean, when I first came here, most of the other students ignored me since I wasn't one of, of noble like them. Only you would reply to me whenever I talked with you. If I didn't have you, I would probably have no one else to sit down and eat lunch like this. That's why I'm so appreciative of the fact that we are friends. I want to cry. It was as if she read my heart and spoke it aloud. Yet, it wasn't my heart that she was reading aloud, but hers. I never knew someone could feel such joy at finding out that the feelings they had been so too scared to share were actually reciprocated. Yet, it is unfair that only one, that only she had the courage to be honest. I want that courage. I want to tell her how I truly feel. I... Hmm? I am glad we are friends too. Holy crap, why can't audio recordings exist in this world yet? What? It's nothing. I, uh, I think uh, my heart just stopped for a moment. What? Are you okay? Are you sick? Beep. Here, let me check your temperature. Do you possibly have a fever? But Beatrix's soft hand is touching my face. I can die happy now. Don't die! Please, Lily! You must live! If you die, I won't have friends anymore! <laughs> because I was so worried about Lily, I didn't realize... how close we were. I don't know for how long, but we stared into each other's eyes! I never realized how round and bright Lily's eyes were. Or how silky her hair was. Not to mention how soft looking her skin is. Suddenly, I felt a sudden warmth and fluttery feeling in my stomach. Whenever I was with Lily, I was always happy, as her mere presence made me feel comfortable and pleasant. Yet the feelings I am feeling now as I stare into her eyes is new, and something I never felt before. What is this feeling? What is going on here?
Broken from my trance, I look over to see the source of the voice. And see my fiancé, the prince, Edward. Your Highness. Oh no. Edward might think I was having an affair or something. He might get upset at Lily and punish her. I have to clear the air so he doesn't get upset. And more importantly, protect Lily. I asked what was going on here. Your Highness, it is not what you think. It's my fault, Lily. Your fault? Of course. I should have expected nothing less. What? I could see what you were doing. I am not blind. Your Highness, I'm sorry. But please don't punish Lily. Punish her? Why would I punish a student you were tormenting? Huh? You were bullying that poor transfer student, weren't you? No! I wasn't! We were... Lily Cl Claremont, I have tolerated your unruly behavior for a while now. But I will not stand for you to harm the new transfer student who obviously cannot defend themselves. This is unbecoming, even for you. It wasn't... As I, I wasn't used to people thinking of me in such a way, and I didn't expect any less from my fiancé, who never once tried to get to know me. Our engagement was decided upon by our parents, so there was no love between us. So I am not surprised that his perception about me aligned with the rest of the student body, even though I have never I have been trying to so hard to change it. At one point, I did hope that maybe at, at least the man I would spend the rest of my life with someone who could truly understand me, see me. But all hopes were dashed when I realized Edward's only interest was in the prosperity of the kingdom. He couldn't care any less about me. Maybe that's why I acted out before, upset that there was no one in the world I could rely on. I could be myself with. I would see me, see, see the real me. But this time, it was different. This time I had someone who was on my side. I had Lily, yet... That's not true. I just thought things were different. But nothing has changed. All I'll ever be seen as is cruel, horrible, villainous. You're wrong! Hmm? She wasn't bullying me. She was helping me earlier with my studies, actually. Miss Lily, you don't have to make up for lies for her. I am not! And I would appreciate if you stopped talking shit about her. Sh shit? Who are you to talk about unbecoming? Your route is usually just... Of you looking down on others just because you're a prince. Not to mention you're pushy, bossy, never listen to others, and just plain rude. Oh, I can't read that. It's cut in half. Oh, since, since for some reason you guys with sadistic dominant personalities are supposed to be appealing, though I don't see the charm. In addition, in your bad ending, you lock up the heroine in a cage like some creep after she's almost forced to leave the academy. Really? What same person would do that? What? I would never! Beatrix, on the other hand, is the most warm-hearted person I know. She always tries to help. I like returning people's things to or clean up the classroom for the teachers. She never ignores me, unlike the other students, and always responds to me. She's patient when she tr teaches me, even though I mess up and get confused. She gives me her dessert for lunch, even though I secretly know she loves sweets a lot. Additionally, because I don't have much money, she bought me three sets of a new uniform, and also my textbooks, which she said were hand-me-downs, but were obviously new. How did you know that? Beatrix is the most gentle and selfless person I know. So I don't want to hear someone like you talk shit about her. Especially from someone who didn't even place the top three for the character Popularity Paul. Popularity Paul? Come on, Beatrix, let's go. Oh, okay. Not even top three? I don't think I've ever seen Edward so stricken. Lily? Beatrix, please break your engagement with the prince. What? I admit, the prince may be handsome and stuff, but he's still a yonder, and I don't like how he talked about you. 
I want you to be happy with someone who treats you the way you deserve to be treated. Lily, Beatrix, I... I love you. I love the way you sometimes seem harsh, but are actually very sensitive to what others say and act. I love how you try to seem you don't care, but you actually care a lot. I love how you secretly kind you are, and how smart and hardworking. I love your deep blue eyes, and your long hair that reminds me of the sun. Even your graceful figure always leaves me speechless. I won't ask you to return my feelings, but I just wanted to let you know them. To be honest, I would be happy being friends with you for the rest of my life if, if that's what you want. No, I don't want that. If you would also like some space, then I would understand. I don't want that either. Then what do you want? It was obvious what I wanted. Since I met Lily, I never spent any moment alone. I no longer dreaded going to every class where I would have to no one to talk to. I no longer ate my lunch quietly in a large courtyard by my lonesome self. I no longer studied silently to fill the free time I had from not having anyone to spend with. And that's because of Lily. Because of Lily, I changed. I stopped being that hurtful and mean person I used to be before. Because of Lily, I no longer waited quietly for class to begin because she would spend time with me before the teacher came. Because of Lily, my lunchtime was no longer quiet but filled with laughter and chatter. Because of Lily, my once dull and monotonous life was bright and wonderful. All those times I spent with Lily were the happiest moments of my life. I never want a life without Lily by my side, so the obvious answer was... I want to be with you. Lily, I am in love with you. You are? It... It took me a while to realize it. But the fact that I always want to be by your side, how being with you makes me feel both comfortable yet nervous, and how everything you do always brings a smile to my face. In summary, Lily Abbott, I am in love with you. Yeah! You don't need to be so loud. I can't help it. I'm so happy. Does that make us lovers then? Well, well, I suppose. But I still have to break my engagement off. That's fine. I'll wait. I'll wait forever for you. Same. Beatrix, I promise you that I'll do my absolute best to make you happy. You don't really have to. Nuh-uh. Jessie wait, Beatrix Clermont. I'll make you the happiest woman in the world. Then I guess I can't stop you. Nope. You can't. Like you can't stop me from doing this. <laughs> I always wanted to carry you like this. I... Put me down at this instant. How are you even doing this? I'm taller than you and heavier. I just casted that strength spell you taught me earlier. Ah. <laughs> I forgot I taught you that. Besides, you're telling me you don't enjoy this a little, Beatrix? I mean, have you read those cheesy romance novels all the time? I know they do this in them. You knew about that? <laughs> Not that I recall. You knew a lot of embarrassing things about me earlier as well. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised. It's nice to have someone who knows you so well, huh? Well, I suppose it's better than being misunderstood. Let to hear. Because I won't stop trying to learn more about you. Because every new thing I learn about you makes me fall for you more. Sheesh. Only someone like you could be so shameless to say something like that. Though I suppose that's what made me fall for you. I didn't quite hear that. Could you say it again for me, please? You? If I not say it once more. But make sure to listen this time. If this was a novel, such a happy ending would never be possible for someone like me. But I guess that's why I suppose I should be glad this isn't a novel. This is all real. 
This is the pure joy I am feeling. <laughs> I love you, Lily. I love you too, Beatrix. Thank you. Thank you to whoever allowed Lily to enter my life. I know. That's from now on. The both of us will make each other very happy. So thank you for listening to my prayers and bringing me Lily. I'll make sure to spend the rest of my life bringing her as much joy as she brought me. I promise. <laughs> so sweet. I suppose this this would be the confession scene, huh? Where at this point the game would end, but I'm grateful it doesn't end here. Moreover, since I'm actually in the game, I don't have to worry about any PG-13 plus rating any longer. <laughs> what are you talking about, dear? Oh, nothing, my love. I forgot to mention. Lily sometimes mentions weird things and places I never heard of, such as Japan or Otome Game, among other things. I'm not sure whether she where she learned such words and or what those things are. But maybe I'll ask her in the future and find out. The end. Oh, this was so sweet. I enjoyed this a lot. <laughs> I hope you did too, and I'll link it down below, and see you in the next one, bye bye <laughs>